Hello, my lovelies. Welcome to my channel. Here we are doing another video for you guys. This has been highly requested. So if you are interested in learning how to work with spirits or saints, keep watching. I hope you guys enjoy and let's get on with the video. Hello, my lovelies. Well, obviously, if you guys are here, you're wanting to know how to work with specific spirits, specific saints. Um, and the best thing I can advise from the very beginning out the gate is definitely do your research, okay? If you're wanting to work with a specific deity, a specific saint, a specific spirit, um, you got to really make sure that you're knowing what you're getting yourself into. Um, a lot of uh, deities or even saints uh, could be somewhat forgiving when you're first learning to work with them. Um, and they will guide you through it as well. I think that the way we worship is something that is very personal. And it's something that, um, like I said, the deeper your connection or your bond is to that specific saint, to that specific deity, um, it just becomes stronger and stronger where it gets to the point where you will understand or know what it is that they're asking or what they're requesting. So um, again, the best thing I can say is do your research, especially if you're wanting to know to work with specific spirits um, that are more on the, I don't like to use black or white, um, but that are more attached to that of the mundane. So as an example, when we work or when we worship uh, with specific deities or de uh, depending on certain saints, as an example, depending on what your practice is, um, as you guys know, I myself, I am married to San Simon, uh, which is a saint that I, uh, you know, that that's my saint. That's my go-to. That's uh, the one, the branch, basically, of all the other uh, spirits or uh, saints or deities that I work with. That's my main, my main source of protection, my main source of if there is specific rituals or specific um, spell works that I'm working, that is the person that I go to um, directly to work with um, to be able to render results to my clients or to be able to get results for myself. Now, there is other deities that I work with. As an example, Isis. Um, <clears throat> she actually, I learned about her, I want to say about 10 or 12 years ago. Uh, she came to me. Um, in while channeling as well as when doing um, meditations. And at the time, I didn't know who she was. Uh, so I wasn't that aware of, you know, pretty much all the information I started getting was directly from her. Now, I understand that a lot of the times um, it doesn't work that way. And it doesn't mean uh, that the bond or that the connection will not, you know, grow stronger as time progresses. Of course, the more you work with the spirit, or with a saint or with the deity, the stronger your connection and bond is going to be till it becomes almost unbreakable, right? So, um, but, you know, my situation with Isis, as an example, was a direct connection. Uh, it was a point in time in my life where there was a lot of need for a lot of healing, self-healing more than anything. And um, I always had this connection, this very deep, rooted connection with that of Egypt, Egyptian history, um, everything that had to do with Egypt, um, you know, uh, everything that had to do with the history itself of Egypt, I was always very inclined, I was always very, like, pulled towards that. So I knew that at some point in my life, uh, there was some type of past life connection to that, but I never really got into, like, the worshiping or none of that. Um, like I said, it wasn't until years later that she started coming into my meditations, um, into my dreams, stuff like that. Little by little, I started uh, getting a stronger connection with her till it got to the point where she gave me her name. Um, I started doing my research, looking into the, looking into um, what is known about her, and um, one of the most, I think crucial moments for me was when um, I had asked her, you know, why she was coming to me and she told me she was preparing me for 
um, a spiritual awakening as well as healing that was going to be needed. Um, so uh, that's how I connected with her. With my son, Simone, was many, many years before that. Um, it actually, I didn't know about him either. I didn't really know anything about him. Uh, it wasn't until a client of mine, um, she's been a client of mine for, I want to say over 15 years. Um, but prior to that, uh, she came to me and she came to visit me for a consultation. And we had had conversations about, um, my belief system, I guess. Um, so you know, I don't know if you guys are aware, but we have this, um, I guess, the way to honor a witch when you go visit someone that is of the, that is of the practice or that is, you know, a known witch, uh, whether it's a male or female, there's no, a witch is a witch, period. Um, but we usually bring offerings to them. And she was aware of that because her background, uh, she was Mexican and her uh, mother and grandmother used to always go uh, to a specific lady that used to, you know, read their cards and do cleansings and stuff. Basically what I did, uh, but that lady had passed um, about three or four years when she came to me. So the more she started coming, our connection grew stronger. And one day she just showed up and she brought me the statue of San Simon. It was a very small statue. Uh, and she gave it to me every time she would come. Like I said, uh, there's this notion of when you visit a witch, you go take um, some type of offering. It could be as little and as simplistic as just an herb or as grand as, you know, some people could be a little bit ridiculous with that. But anyways, um, so anyways, um, I didn't really know much about him. I didn't really have a lot of information when she gave me the statue, my heart. I cannot express um the feeling I felt. It was more than gratitude. It was almost as if there was this feeling, this immediate connection with that saint. Um, I can't express it. It was almost like kind of like what people describe when you meet the person that you're going to like fall in love with, like kind of like that. It was a very deep rooted connection that I wasn't even aware of because at that point I didn't know who he was. Um, of course, after I got him, I started doing my research. I started, you know, trying to work with him. Um, so based on that experience, um, one thing I've always done when working with, you know, when barely learning to work with certain spirits or saints is your go-to always, like if you're unsure what color, uh, candles to offer them, what kind of incense to offer them start with the most simplistic. So this was taught to me many, many years ago. Um, always go with white when you are unsure. White is always a substitute for any other color other than black. Um, so I didn't know how to work with him then. So I would light him white candles. And every time I would be working with him or praying to him, uh, even in meditation, I would always ask him, you know, guide me let me know what it is that you prefer, what it is that you want me to give to you, stuff like that. Um, of course, from the research I had made, I start, I knew right away that um, uh, that his candle was a yellow. I didn't know that that's the color he loves. Um, but I, I was told um, by someone else that is actually from where that saying comes from, which is Guatemala. Um, that she would always give him tortillas as an offering. So I started giving my saint tortillas and they would immediately go bad. Like they would go bad. Like I put it today in the altar and tomorrow it would completely, like it would be mold. I don't know how that would happen like overnight, literally. So I was like, okay, this is something he's not liking or he's not taking. So from there, I started um, as, you know, for us Mexicans, um, they sell these breads. I'm not sure if you guys know what I'm talking about, but um, they're like conchas, what, what they call conchas. And it's like a bread and sometimes they're like white or pink. Um, but anyways, I would always offer him the pink ones. And funny enough, he would always like it was always I would put one in the altar and it would not go bad. It would be like perfectly 
fine for like almost two weeks, which is like kind of crazy, right? With Brad. So I took that as he was accepting that. And I think that it was because like I said, when it comes to spirits, when it comes to deities and when it comes to saints, it's a very, it's a personal transaction, transaction in the sense of when you're working with them, you offer them something in gratitude and you offer it as well uh, because you're, you know, because you're intending to build a connection with them. So to me, um, as, as you guys know, you know, my nickname or a lot of people know me by Pinky Doll, uh, something that I've always carried um, from high school all the way to college, all the way through now. So anyways, um, I would always go for the pink ones. So I noticed that they started lasting longer. So it was more of, to me, it came out of my heart to offer him the pink ones because, you know, that was my color. It was my preference. So I felt like the connection was deeper because of that rapport of, yeah, it's an offering to him, but I'm also making it personal because I'm offering him something that is of my liking, that I prefer. So I started noticing that. Um, so when working with San Simon, um, giving him giving him bread is something that I do every day, um, as well as getting him cigars. Um, of course, the more he gives you, the more he protects you, the more he grants you what you're asking for, the more you have to correspond to him, letting him know that you're taking care of him as well. So the more I started building that connection, I started getting him like, you know, I went from getting like dollar cigars to getting very expensive Cuban cigars, as an example, because those are the ones that he loves. He loves quality, you guys, <laughs> as well as candles, you know. So I started building that connection with him. It got to the point where he started coming to me. Now, a lot of people don't know this, but depending on certain deities, certain spirits, uh, certain saints, they're very strong and powerful. Um, the stronger that bond becomes, the more accessible they become to you. So it literally got to the point where I physically can see uh, my saint. I can physically see him, uh, especially when there's certain rituals that I do specifically for him. Um, he's has came into my dreams initially when I first started working with him progressively. You know, he I would see a shadow, a shadow of a man um, with a hat, which is what he's known for um, in my dreams. And then I started seeing that shadow in my room. So. For those of you guys that are not, like you guys easily get scared, I would not suggest for you guys to work with saints or spirits that are very temperamental because just as they're temperamental, that means that they're extremely powerful. And sometimes um, they are, their energy is very, very strong that it could throw off certain people or like scare them or anything like that. Um, so again, I, you know, do your research, um, make sure that, you know, there is progressively, uh, when we're talking about uh, saints, there's different saints for different things. And it just depends on your belief system. It depends on um, your background. It depends what you've been exposed to. But if you're going into this really wanting to work with San Simon as an example, and you don't really know how to go about it, my personal suggestion would be to light him a yellow candle, to light him a cigarette, and to put him a little guarito, which is a shot glass with some type of alcohol, uh, preferably aguardiente, which is like tequila. Uh, it could even be rum um, or vodka. But... From my experience, he loves tequila. Um, and so when it comes to working with him, he's one of the saints that I consider to be very temperamental in the sense of whatever it is that you promise, you must give to him. 
because if not, next time you want to work with him, he will let you know, either through circumstance, either through uh, someone reminding you of something that you promised you would do for him. Um, it, it, and you'll definitely feel either his gratitude or his upsetness or his rage <laughs> sometimes. Um, but again, he's a very powerful saint and getting to build a connection with him, it, got, it gets to the point where um, if you're wanting to embark on a new journey, uh, if you're wanting to do a new business, if you're wanting uh, to, you know, ask for protection for you or for your family, etc., he will let you know. He will place himself throughout everyone around you, someone, somewhere, will talk to you about him, will mention his name. You could be at a random store and the person in front of you is talking about the same when before you've never heard of him. That's how strong and powerful he is. Um, like I said, the, the connection started getting stronger and stronger where now, you know, I don't even need to invoke him. I don't even need to uh, worship him. I don't even need to light him a candle. I can feel his energy like this, like just quick. Um, I can tell his energy because he's very strong. Like I said, he, he, he has a very, very strong aura. Um, now when we're talking about different, like other saints, uh, we have, you know, like as an example, San Judas, um, which is, you know, uh, a lot of Mexicans worship him. We have, uh, a lot of people worship La Santa Muerte, uh, which is death or the reaper. Um, a lot of people, it, it's just basically what it is that you feel more comfortable with. As an example, um, my background is Catholicism, right? Um, so, of course, I brought, you know, a lot of the saints that I was exposed to or that I believed in um, molded. A lot of my belief system so again it just depends what you feel comfortable with as an example isis isis is a deity that i didn't know about um she just came to me uh she presented herself uh through circumstances i later understood and i have built a connection with her a very deep connection anything that has to do with healing anything that has to do um with soul type of connections or with work that has to do with soulmate kind of connections. That's, that's the deity that I go to all the time. Um, because there is anything that has to do with healings of kids as well. Um, she is very, she's been very, a great instrument, uh, in the sense of my healing practices when I work uh, with clients and stuff like that, she's made her presence known. And again, it just depends. So my suggestion to you guys is if you don't know and you're barely getting into this and you're wanting uh, to, you know, figure out um, what deity or what saint to work with, make your research. Do your research. Um, try to find out as much as possible and whatever one is being called to you. Or again, for a lot of you guys, when you're on this journey or when you're first beginning this journey, the people around you or um, the the saints or the deities that are wanting to work with you are usually the ones that choose you. Uh, this is something that has been known throughout centuries, you know, like they, they choose you. It's not really about you choosing. Um, and, and again, like I said, for everyone, it's going to be very different. Sometimes, you know, uh, you decide to work with a specific deity, a specific saint, and years later, you're exposed to a different one where you feel a deeper connection or a grander connection, I should say. And it, it's just ultimately they end up guiding you to the ones that are choosing you. So take that with a grain of salt. Um, now, in regards to spirits, spirits is a whole different thing. It has nothing to do with deities or uh, with saints. And Again, I don't like to really emphasize the white and the black type of thing. Um, this is an overall perspective, okay? Now, the most powerful um, quote or saying when it comes to working with spirits is the I will it, I command it, 
my will is enough of a reason. Okay? So really think about that. Think about that. Analyze what that means because that's the most important overall um, easiest quote that you can remind yourself or tell yourself that also gives you an insight into the world of working with spirits, okay? So when I say I will it, when you're working with spirits, whether you're invoking, whether you're casting, whether you're calling, whether you are uh, substantially um, trying to create a connection with a specific spirit, you have to remember that you, right, as a living person, as here in the physical realm, uh, in the earthly plane, your will is more than enough to command a spirit. So when I say that, what I'm trying to say is because they are of the astral world, you have more control and power here in the earth plane, okay? So those of you guys that are easily scared, those of you guys that are unsure or that you're there's an intrigue or a desire to work with spirits, but at the same time you're kind of scared, my advice for you guys is do not meddle with this until you can get over the fact of the dogma or the fear around around working with spirits. Now, the reason I say that is because they are known, no matter what rank they are, no matter what rank you're trying to work with um, specific spirits, they are known to be some extremely temperamental depending on who you're working with, but they are creatures that, I shouldn't say creatures, they're spirits that have a tendency when you call upon them you as a person of earth right in the earth plane you have power and control now when there's fear you've already called them you've already you know pulled them in or tried to get them in reel them in but this is where it gets tricky. If there's, if you're scared of it, if you are unsure of it, they can turn back around and instead of doing your bidding, you end up doing their bidding. That's when we have paranormal shit happening. That's when things get out of control. That's when they are consistently interfering in your in your everyday life. Um, and it's because that fear opens that door for them to step into this earthly plane and start meddling and creating chaos. That's their nature. So like I said, if you're unsure or if there's fears, I would not encourage you guys to get into working with spirits until you're more knowledgeable about this or you can get over the fact of the taboo around it or the fear of the unknown. Um, okay, so anyways, if I'm looking this way, it's because I wrote down notes just to make this video a little bit quicker. So, spirits who are powerful and exalted serve only their confidence and intimate friends. So, what do I mean by that? If you're going to a spirit or invoking a spirit or wanting to work with a spirit off the bat, they're not going to do your bidding. They, as an example, if you invoke them, they will let you know that they're present. Okay? But there has to be a connection. Meaning, you can declare off the bat what it is that you're calling them for, but you have to continuously keep working with them in the sense of invoking or in the sense of offering them a ritual or an offering. And this is something that has to consistent, consistently be done in order to create a rapport, to create some type of connection um, for them to serve you. 
or for them to work or do your biddings. So it's almost a, it's almost like any type of relationship. You kind of have to build a bond and they will not do biddings for anyone other than those that they consider a confidant or a friend. And now there's other ways of going about it. Um, unless there's a pact, right? So when a pact is made, right, there is a service then ca that can be acquired from them. But when you do pacts, what this means is that you're offering something of yours in return, okay? And the reason why they take this is because you are feeding them life force from one way or another, depending on what you're packed or what you're agreeing upon. I hope that makes sense um, in the most vague way possible. Now, I'm not going to go into details with specific spirits for you guys to work with. Again, do your research, look into you know, I will give you an overall understanding, but I'm not going to be speaking about specific spirits. I guess we can call upon, not call upon, I'm not calling upon you guys at the moment. Um, we can mention, right, um, certain ones to give you guys examples, but I don't encourage you guys to just get into it without knowing or without learning uh, protection magic as well. Um, like I said, spirits, especially depending on the type of spirits that you're calling upon, some are extremely powerful and extremely difficult to get rid of if you don't know how to protect yourself, if you don't know how to open and close um, that portal. Okay, so again, you guys, you know, do your research, learn as much as possible. I encourage you guys to learn. Um, there is a lot of research that you can do. There's a lot of books out there. Uh, the Keys of Solomon, um, the Lesser Keys of Solomon. I highly encourage you guys to do your research on that um, so that it can give you an a deeper understanding of what it is like to work with certain spirits. Okay. All right. So let's see what was my other notes here. So we're talking about packs. Um, in regards to working with spirits, there are both superiors and inferiors, right? Um, like a chain of command, right? Like in the army, like in the Navy, in the police department, anything in life, right? There's like a chain of command. Um, it's working with the extremely powerful ones. Uh, and then you work with their servants. They're the ones that do their biddings. And then they are the small spirits or... Uh, the spirits that, you know, are inferior, are not as strong, not as powerful, but they are extremely excited about doing your bidding because that's their nature, okay? So when working with specific spirits, as an example, if you're working with a very strong, powerful spirit, it's not going to come easy, first of all, making contact. There are certain rituals that must be done. There are uh, certain offerings that need to be done. There are certain sigils that need to be cast and certain incenses that need to be burning when you're doing the invocation and when you are calling upon them. So I'm not going to get into that um, because, again, this is a lot of information. It is powerful information and with powerful information falling in the wrong hands, someone can just say, you know what, let me just get into it without knowing much or doing much research and then later on not knowing how to deal with the chaos that follows. Um, so it kind of reminds me of my spell videos. 
uh, those that, you know, are quick to comment on my videos like, oh, you talk too much. Oh, you explain too much. Can you just get to the point? Those are the ones that if they had this type of information and knowledge, they would not hesitate twice about invoking without knowing really the consequences behind that and what you need to know to protect yourself, to close the portal, to banish them if need be, et cetera, et cetera. So anyways, let's move on from that. Okay, so we were talking about um, the inferiors, like a chain of command. Um, as an example, don't get scared. As an example, we're talking about Lucifer, Belzebuth, um, Astaroth as well, uh, which are extremely powerful and emperors in their own right, uh, depending on what it is that each one pretty much has control over. And then moving on from that, we have um, when invoking, they don't always appear as the same person. So an, as an example, um, like I said, I'm going to try not to mention a lot of um, because I don't want you guys invoking something that you can regret. So anyways, when you're invoking specific ones, like the ones I mentioned, which are pretty much the chain of command, they are the extremely powerful ones, um, the ones that make major shit happen, um, and those that work with them. They will not necessarily as an example if you invoke them they will not um basically appear to you or come to you or let you know that they're present them themselves they usually send uh lower spirits uh, to be present or to acknowledge that you are calling upon them etc cetera, etc cetera. depending how advanced you are in the practice depending how knowledgeable you are of uh, receiving and projecting energy and stuff like that. Anything that has to do with um, creating, banishing, or receiving energies. Um, sometimes, you know, the ones you're invoking do present themselves. And when they do, they will not always present themselves as the same person, the same animal, or the same entity. Um, it's basically depending on their temperament at that point in time. So take that what you will and with a grain of salt um let's see what else <clears throat> oh yeah so then we have what is called um demons as an example minoson can make you know one win uh games of chance and stuff like that uh Bukanon has the power to cause hatred and jealousy between the opposite sex um so those are lower freak, uh, frequency spirits as well as demons. Uh, demons being the lowest vibration, uh, they don't really have a lot of power or control. Um, they are more in the uh, shenanigans of it all. And that's why they're so excited to uh, do your bidding because you're unleashing them basically. Um, but I see them as almost like, childlike um type of energy where they're just like sh doing shenanigans or they're willing to do shenanigans that type of thing versus the other higher spirits are spirits that there needs to be some type of respect and some type of knowledge before even acknowledging that you're wanting to invoke them um that type of thing and here's the thing about working with spirits right no matter how high the chain is or how low the chain is, when it comes to spirits, the moment that they sense your fear or that they sense there is some type of weakness in your character or personality, they will take over, they will create shenanigans, um, they will create craziness in your life and sometimes even gets to the point, well, we're talking about the higher ones now. Um, where it's usually you doing their bidding instead of them doing your bidding. So again, don't jump into this, you guys, if you really have no experience. Like I said, 
learn to build your connections with your deities, with your spirits, um, with your saints. I mean, to have that strong protection, to have that strong anchor into this earthly plane before working or dabbing into calling up on spirits. Um, working with spirits could be as ceremonial and ritualized and methodical uh, depending on the type of spirit that you're trying to work with. Um, but it could be as simplistic as going at midnight on a Friday to a gravesite, picking up some, you know, some dirt from a grave and calling upon that spirit. Um, it, it literally could work that way as well. You know, um, to us, the dead are something that are highly respected and, you know, there's about permission receiving and getting that type of energy. But um, is it possible just to go to a specific gravesite, pick up some dirt on a Friday not, uh, Friday at midnight and call upon the spirit? Yes, you're able to do that as well. But like I said, don't open a portal or make sure that you're educated enough when opening a portal to learn how to close it as well. Because sometimes when things get out of hand, there is a need to banish them to resend them back to where they came from. And if you don't have the power, if you don't have the knowledge, and above all, if you don't have the fiercest that you need to have to be able to banish a spirit, then you're just pissing them off more. So with that being said, uh, let's see. Okay. Um, So invocations and rituals must be execu executed to make contact with those you want to work with. And this is in every single aspect. This is like when we do that with saints, where we try to build a connection by doing offerings, by praying to them, by ritualizing ourselves to them, or initiating ourselves to a specific saint. Like as an example, in Santeria, in Santeria, there is... Uh, knowledge and wisdom that the person that is molding you or the godmother or godfather that's giving you, um, preparing you basically to receive uh, the rayamiento and basically the graduation of um, becoming a santero or, or a santera, um, you get all of this information from past experience, right? Because they're teaching you the ropes, they're, you know, stuff like that. Um, but as well as like in your religion or your practice, if you're Wiccan, if you're, uh, you don't practice and you're, you just do witchcraft. There's people out there that don't have a specific religion. They just do witchcraft. Um, so again, it just, it depends. Ultimately what it comes down to is rituals are something crucial, not just in our practice, but in every single practice of life when it comes to spirituality. If you're Christian or if you're Catholic, it's the rituals and rites of that, of the baptism, um, uh, the baptism, the uh, communion, stuff like that. All of those are rituals. All of those practices are ceremonies, ritualized ceremonies where on a spiritual level, you're marrying that practice. It's the same thing in every other uh, practice or religion. It's just that, like I said, depending on what your belief system is, depending on what it is that you're wanting to do, my advice to all of you guys is before working with spirits, try the best you can um, to at least have a strong connection with the deity or with a saint uh, before dabbing into that. Because again, like I said, it could be just as great and powerful as the rewards could come, it could be as devastating and catastrophe-like living situation if things get out of hand and you do not know how to deal with it. Um, so anyways, I know that this was very generalized. Um, and the reason for that, I hope you guys understand. I don't want to mention specific spirits, specific um lower vibration spirits or demons as well uh, because a lot of the times people are just very quick and wanting to get results or wanting to do something 
and they don't really think about it without thinking of the consequences. So, you know, I hope that this helps you guys in some shape, way, or form, uh, deeper understanding of what it's like or what you should prepare before getting to that point. Um, also, I wanted to tell you guys, what else was I don't want to work with spirits, but want to work with saints or deities or work with archangels. Archangels are a higher form of spiritual beings that um, you can worship as well as you can work with. Even for love spells, you guys, um, there are certain archangels that will help you uh, clear the way and, and, and create a stronger bond with your person. Uh, as an example, a lot of people think that archangels are just for protection and stuff like that. No, you can actually work with them in regards to love, in regards to health, stuff like that. So again, like I said, the most crucial and important thing here is basically do your research or get um, advice, uh, guidance from someone that is experienced. Don't be very quick thinking that, you know, you can just get right into working with spirits, working with demons, or working with archangels. Because sometimes even working with archangels, you can offend them if you don't know how to invoke them. So again, do your research. Really make sure to prepare yourself before getting into that. I hope this gives you guys some type of understanding. I hope that it encourages all of you guys to work with either saints or deities to create a stronger bond to create a more, or to even bring more spirituality into your life, which is something that is crucial and very important for each single one of us. Um, and like I said, creating that bond and that connection, little by little, um, they will reciprocate that love and that affection and that devotion as well. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I tried to make it as quickly as I could. I hope that um, this gives you some insight and some type of understanding of how to work with specific spirits, saints, um, and deities. I hope you guys enjoyed, and we'll see each other soon. Bye.